Good afternoon and welcome to Sparks Opening Coffee. I'm Sandy Keir, president of the Spark Auxiliary and your host for today's meeting. Just a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, during the meeting, feel free to type in any comments or questions you have in the chat box and we'll answer them at the end of the program. Also, this meeting is being streamed live on the Spark Facebook page and Spark website, so your friends can listen to the meeting in those places too. It seems like forever since we've been together at a Spark event, and we miss all of you. Even though I, can I can't literally see you today, I know you're out there, and I want to thank you for everything you do to support Spark's mission to end domestic and sexual violence in our communities. There are so many things we want to talk to you about today, but before we tell you what Spark has been up to, we want to convey our sincere hope that you, your family, and your friends are safe and healthy and haven't, haven't been impacted by the virus. Second, we hope you've been able to maintain a sense of emotional and spiritual well-being at a time when our connection to others, to the arts, music, theater, and fitness centers has all been cut off. I think we're all so lucky to be here in Southwest Florida, where we've been able to enjoy the sun, the warm air, the ocean breezes, and the ability to take a walk and swim every day. I know that's kept a lot of us positive and optimistic over the last six months. As you can imagine, it's been a challenging time for Spark too. Unfortunately, domestic and sexual abuse in our communities and the need to provide programs and services for survivors and their families is greater than ever. As you can imagine, our ability to raise money to fund those programs has been severely hindered by the public health crisis and the, and the recession. We've asked ourselves numerous questions. Could we actually try to hold events while keeping our members and guests safe with masks and social distancing? Would our members feel comfortable enough to attend an event with 50 to 100 other people? What would happen if we tried to hold an event and nobody came? And finally, could we reasonably expect to attract sponsors and underwriters when so many small businesses are suffering? To get some clarity about how all of you would feel about attending a fundraising event, we sent a survey to over 300 individuals in June. The results were pretty clear. 50% of you said you wouldn't feel comfortable attending an event with over 25 people until the CDC says it's safe. And 35% of you said you wouldn't feel comfortable doing so until after you've been vaccinated against the virus. Based on those results and the fact that Florida was reporting thousands of new COVID-19 cases every day in July, we made the decision to cancel the very popular Venice card and game party. We just couldn't see any way to have over 100 women in close proximity to each other for several hours and keep them safe nor did we want our committee members out in public soliciting merchandise and gift certificates for those beautifully wrapped gift baskets. Let's all hope that things look a lot better next fall so we can all enjoy the card and game party again. Now let's take a look at the events we are holding. If you have your new membership directory, you'll find all of our events listed on pages two and three, along with the names of who to contact for more information. We'll also be emailing everybody at the end of the call today a quick summary of today's program so you have all of the important information you need. We will be holding our monthly coffees, but they'll be virtual, just like this one. Although we miss seeing each other and socializing, we felt that Zoom events such as this one would be safe and yet still enable us to keep all of you informed about what's happening at SPUR, let you know what our needs are for the shelter, and what's happening at the treasure chest. Another big change is that our coffees will be at noon this year rather than 10 a.m. We have so many new members who are still working full time and want to be involved. We thought this would be a good opportunity to try changing the time so they can learn more about Spark. Because we've had so many new members since last fall, we're going ahead with a virtual Spark orientation program in October. This session will be hosted by Gina Jordan, and she's going to talk about the program in just a few minutes. As many of you golfers know, 
golf courses and country clubs remained open all summer and they found that by limiting golf carts to one golfer and making a few other adjustments, people could safely golf during the pandemic. So we made the decision to hold the Scramble for Spark at Longbow Key Club in November. Sandy Fulkerson is heading that committee again this year, and she's here to give you a few details. We're holding an exciting new event this year called Spark SR Clue, which is a professionally created virtual game centered in Sarasota. Emily Walsh and Susan Jones are co-chairing that event, and Mary Ellen Mancini is here to tell us a little bit about it this morning. All of us realize how important the holiday luncheon is. Due to your generosity, we amass hundreds of unwrapped gifts for the families who participate in our programs and services. So we had to find a way to hold some version of cookies, cakes, and carolers. Andrea Andrus and Maggie Shaw are chairing that committee this year, and they're going to be here this morning to tell you a few of the exciting things they've got planned for that event. The Sparkle in the City Gala, our black tie event that includes cocktails, dinner, dancing, both a live and silent auction, is scheduled for March 26th at the Weston Hotel. If you're interested in more information about that, you can contact Ning at the Spark office. We haven't yet made a final decision about whether to hold the fashion show. Because of safety concerns and safe distancing requirements, many other organizations in town have canceled their large events for the year. And we're trying to determine how to gather so many people together in one place safely. So please stay tuned. We'll keep you updated on our decision on that matter. Our annual celebration luncheon is scheduled for April 7th and we'll assess the public health situation before we make a final decision about whether to hold that or not. And finally, Sparkle on the Links is tentatively scheduled for April 22nd at Plantation Golf and Country Club. We'll keep you updated on our plans for that event. So this isn't going to be a typical year for Spark but we've caught, we're cautiously holding events that we think we can handle safely. As always, we thank you for the time, the talent, and the treasure you give in support of our programs and services every year. And we look forward to seeing all of you very soon. Before I turn the meeting over to Sandy Fulkerson, I want to recognize and thank all the members of the Auxiliary Board this year. Sandy Fulkerson, first VP, Gina Jordan, second VP, Darcy Jacob, Treasurer, Catherine Pike, Recording Secretary, Edie Smith, Recording, excuse me, Corresponding Secretary, Sherry Mills, Membership Chair, Whitney Sale, Parliamentarian, Courtney Ryan, Historian, Andrea Andrus, Hospitality, Nancy Raymond, Treasure Chest Representative, and Babs Ulmer and Kathy Mariani, Members at Large. Thank you all for your service. And now I'm going to turn the meeting over to Sandy Fulkerson to tell you about our monthly coffees and November golf tournament. Sandy? I'm here. I don't know if you can see me yet. Hi there. Y'all can see me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Sandy Fulkerson. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our upcoming coffees. As Sandy mentioned, uh, we're going to be doing virtual coffees this year, and we have four additional coffees scheduled after this one. We're so lucky that we had over 100 people register for this first coffee, and we're very thankful that you can participate. So you've probably got one of these lovely little postcards, which shows all the dates for the upcoming coffees on the back, and the... Um, Information as far as getting into the Zoom meeting, well, you must know because you're here. So um, we'll keep you updated on what's coming up with that. But um, our first coffee, our next coffee will be October um, 7th. Well, it's always gonna be the first Wednesday of the month. Um, and we'll have one in October, November, January, and March. So we hope that you can register when you hear about them and we'll have interesting speakers We'll try to entertain you a little bit. And we hope that you um, are able to participate. 
So in October, we will be, um, we'll have an educational um, speaker and they'll tell how the outreach and education helps with um, educating the community and breaking the cycle of violence in our community. I'm sorry about the background noise here. Hope it isn't too much. But um, we also will be collecting items like we have in the past and we'll let you know where, where you can drop things off. But you can also order things through Amazon. Amazon Smile is a wonderful way to do it. And they deliver directly to Spark. You can, um, yes, you can look at the spark.net website and they'll tell you what the wish list is for the shelter, as well as you can find out more about all of our events. So um, October, we'll be hearing the education speaker. Then in November, we're going to the treasure chest and Linda will tell us a lot about what the treasure chest does to support Spark. So that, you know, you can still shop there now too. And it's really great if you haven't been in. They have some wonderful sales and they really updated the whole marketing place is just beautiful. So stop in when you get a chance. Um, so the next one, March, we'll do, and we'll do, we'll let you know more about all of those things as they come up. So now I'm going to change hats, literally. Okay, so we're going to have a golf outing. And all of our ducks are in order, as you can see, we're all ready. We have a great committee working on this. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna have a, um, what would you call it? Well, a box lunch. It's gonna be individual carts if you want them. If you're a family or a couple, you can certainly ride together. But we're gonna have a lot of uh, interesting things, with outdoors, awards, a helicopter drop, ball drop for 50-50 chance. So there's a lot of opportunities to have some fun. So I hope you can get involved and find out what these ducks do at the golf house. And um, we do look for sponsors. The uh, registration forms are just now out, out being printed. So if you don't receive one in the mail, let us know. Um, we're looking for golfers, of course. We're also looking for helpers and sponsors. Um, for the helicopter, for the beer cart, for all of the events that we're going to be performing, the long drive, and we're going to make it fun. So, and it is one of those things you can feel good about being out in the outside, having the fresh air and socially distancing. And we do have, you know, safe, safety features in place. So thank you very much for participating. Um, if you're not a member of the auxiliary and you don't get the mailings, Sherry Mills is going to tell you more about how you can become a member and what the benefits are. And Sherry Mills is up next. So thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day. And we hope to see you on the golf course. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. If you're here, you are a true supporter of Spark, and you want to learn more about the organization. So thank you just for being here. We currently have 234 auxiliary members, and you should have received a directory with the calendar events and auxiliary um, member contact information. But if you did not get a directory, please don't hesit hesitate to call Lori Dietz at the Spark office or reach out to me. So today we're gonna to do the top 10 ways of how you can become involved or help spark. And so think back to David Letterman when the used to do the late night TV, and we're gonna start at number 10. Number 10, if you have forgotten to pay your dues this year for the auxiliary membership, please reach out to Lori Dietz. You can call her with your credit card information or you can send a check into Spark Attention Lori Dietz. The dues for single membership is $35, but perhaps you would consider doing a family membership for $50, considering a lot of our events have been negatively impacted by COVID with um, your auxiliary membership has never met more. Number nine, if you are a Facebooker, like Sparks Facebook page or Sparks auxiliary page, it's a great way to keep your pulse on Spark and on domestic violence locally and nationally. Number eight, 
attend a coffee or one of the orientation sessions to learn more about the various facets of Spark. And Gina Jordan is going to be telling you about the orientation session coming up in the fall. Number seven, donate an item to Spark. So before COVID, there was always a requested item to bring to the, to the events, like diapers or toiletries or Easter baskets. But we can still do this, even though we're in the midst of this pandemic and we're meeting virtually. You can go on Amazon and order what, what item you would normally bring to an event, and you can just have it shipped directly to Spark. Number six, speaking of Amazon, Another way you can help Spark is to set up your Amazon account so that um, the donation will go to Spark. It's called Smile Amazon, and it looks just like Amazon, but every purchase you make, 0.5% will go back to Spark in terms of a, a financial donation. It doesn't sound like a lot, but with so many people doing it, it really does add up. Number five. The next time you clean closets or redecorate, please consider donating items to the treasure chest. In the past year, over 200 women fleeing domestic violence have shopped for free in our store, and it's a revenue stream for Spark. Number four, volunteer at the treasure chest. And I'm gonna throw Nancy R R Raymond's name out there, but if you're interested, Nancy Raymond, um, contact her to learn more. Number three, attend, volunteer, or sponsor an event, such as SR, SR Clue, which Mary Ellen Mancini is going to talk to us about, or a golf outing, as Sandy just told us about, or the Cookies, Cakes, and Carolers event that Andrea Andrus is going to be talking about shortly. Number two, Get on a committee to help organize one of these events. And lastly, number one, become a legacy member. And this is where you um, bequeath some, some, a donation after your passing to Spark. And the person to contact about that is Mary Ellen Mancini. So without further ado, thank you so much for being a Spark cheerleader. And as we all go into the community and we learn more about the different facets of Spark, um, we just really have a deep gratitude for all of you being here today, especially in these unusual times. I'm gonna turn it over to Gina Jordan, who's our second vice president of the auxiliary. And she's gonna be telling you about the orientation session um, opportunity for you in the fall. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I apologize for the technical difficulty uh, with my camera today um, in the office, and it's not working for me. Um, but I wanted to share with you the upcoming Spark Auxiliary Orientation. We will be having two of these. Uh, one in the fall, one in the spring, as mentioned, and they're taking place via Zoom. The first event will be October 27th at 10 a.m., and we will have um, a virtual tour of the treasure chest sponsored by uh, our manager of the treasure chest, Linda Thal. We will also have a video uh, from Jean Gay, our founder, as well as uh, our CEO and president, the lovely Jessica Hayes. We will be taking a virtual tour of the shelter as well and um, having other pre presenters um, associated with Spark and um, how you get involved in, and just learning more about Spark and, and what we do. Um, even if you have been a longtime member and have been um, need a refresher course, we would invite you to also join us. So we look forward to uh, everyone being able to uh, join us on October 27th. We will be sending out an invitation and a link. And um, now I would like to turn it over to um, our director of events, development director, excuse me, 
Mary Ellen Mancini. Hi, I don't know, it took just a minute there. I'm sorry to kind of get going. Um, first of all, um, I just wanted to say hello and, and I miss all of your smiling faces. Um, I was over here secretly like, clapping when Sherry Mills said the number one because that was really something I wanted to discuss today was our legacy. Um, as many of you know, Spark celebrated its 40th anniversary and it's been difficult without being able to hold all the events and to kind of create that revenue for Spark. And um, this is something that's very near and dear to our hearts because we've been here for 40 years and we wanna be sure that we're here for 40 more. And so today I just wanna make a special request and I just really wanna ask you all to kindly consider becoming a legacy member for Spark. We had a goal of um, attaining 40 new members in this anniversary year and it kind of got halted when everything got halted. Um, but we were up to 25 members and I think that uh, becoming a member is, is, while it's a deeply personal decision, it's, it's much easier than we often think. It does not have to be done through your will. It can be done by being a beneficiary in a life insurance policy, by making Spark a beneficiary, by making us a beneficiary in a retirement plan. Um, an IRA can be a gift of real estate, or it can be a gift um, made right now in your lifetime that goes directly into our endowment. And so there's many ways, um, which I would be delighted to discuss with you and, and help you in any way I can. And I just want you to know that it's so important to us because by becoming a legacy member, your plan gift allows us to look forward with confidence and ensure a future stream of support. Uh, you're the catalyst to stop domestic and sexual violence in our communities for generations to come. You help sustain Spark, its programs, and its services when you say yes to becoming a legacy member. And we can't do it without you. So I ask today that you please consider that. Um, and then now I would like to share with you about an upcoming event. Um, while it's not um, quite as big and flashy as, as you know, in-person events, um, we've really tried to think outside the box and still... Um, have ways for people to interact and have fun. And our newest event is almost a month from today. It's on October the 24th, and it's called Spark SR Clue. And uh, I want to share a little video that we created that I think um, will kind of highlight and showcase the event. And then I'll explain just a tiny bit more about it. So I'm not sure what um, happened. We, we have a little snappy kind of catchy tune that goes along with that. And uh, I'm not sure why that didn't, that didn't show up, but um, I know there's been a little bit of confusion around it. Um, all of the information is at uh, www.spark.net um, under our events section. And uh, long story short, kind of in a nutshell, you uh, teams are made up of four people because we know um, that most most people have at least three others that they're willing to kind of hang out with in a closed group and uh, be safe. And we are delivering meals uh, either from Michael's on East or from Il Panificio. And we're going to have a wraparound party that's going to have like uh, live music and DJ who's taking requests and, um, you know, virtual photo booth that you can do through like your telephone or your iPad. And then we're going to have an actual game that's curated to uh, include the SRQ area, but it's all from the comfort of your own home. It's an online game and all the teams who sign up will be um, competing against one another. 
and it's the winner will be announced based on the time it takes to finish the adventure and the adventure is like a clue based adventure um, that's just really using your brain and it's super fun and it highlights our community it highlights our sponsors and it helps support Spark too. So um, I ask that you consider looking into that and seeing if maybe you'd like to get involved. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to call me. Um, and now we're gonna share about another event uh, called Cookies, Cakes, and Carolers. And so I would like to introduce and turn over the floor to the lovely Andrea Andrus and Maggie Shaw. And again, on my way out, I just want to say thank you to Sherry Mills for your number one, because that is number one. Okay, we're unmuted, right? Okay. Can you hear us? Can everybody hear us? Well, we can't hear them. Either. Oh, that's right. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Where's our picture? Let me just see. No, nope. we'll do it. Uh, let's see. Uh, get this, uh, oh, All right, here we are. Uh, are we, we hope we're there. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Andrea Andrus. I am Maggie Shaw. And with the, as Sandy said, and, and uh, Mary Ellen, we're the co-chairs of the Cookies, Cakes, and Carolers. And our new name is 2020 Transitional Holiday Event this year, along with a wonderful committee of auxiliary members, and Mary Ellen, Ning, and Lori, and others at Spark have uh, really helping us to make this event possible. For several years, um, and Sandy Kira talked about this as well, the auxiliary has held the cook cake Cookies, Cakes, and Carolers Holiday Luncheon at Michael's on East. And the purpose of the event was to get, was to get all of us together, certainly, at the holiday, uh, in the holiday season. But it was also to gather toys, gifts, and gift cards for the families who are Spark's clients so they will have a wonderful holiday. Another purpose of the event was to raise funds from the purchase of tickets to the luncheon and through the sale of auction items and raffle tickets to support the organization's mission then and in the future. And by the way, we had props. I know Sandy had her, Sandy Fulkerson had her hat and so forth. And we have a reindeer hat that keeps fading into the background and other hats, so, and it takes yeah. a lot for me to wear a hat. Yeah, with so. the background, it fades, so. <laughs> so that, that shows you how much I like the Spark Auxiliary. And I'll turn over to Maggie for a yeah. minute. Get, get rid of my hat there. Um, as you, Sandy alluded to, and we all know, uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we are unable to hold an actual luncheon this year. It's been a challenge and also an opportunity to explore to reinvent and to create new ways. Um, trying and, and succeeding in uh, having an event to help families and to raise funds um, while keeping everyone safe. Thus, the birth of a holiday drive-through event that will be designed, that has been designed to be held on December the 5th in the parking area behind the Spark office from 4 to 7 p.m. Okay, the, dri the drive-through, which is on a Saturday, will be hosted by the Auxiliary Holiday Event Committee, great group of people, and members of the Spark staff, great group of people as well. An invitation will be sent out to all of our auxiliary members and all of you and past holiday luncheon attendees via mail by the end of October, and there'll be a follow-up email blast as a reminder. And we'd like to say, you know, urge your friends and family to even if they haven't gone to the lunch in the past, to to come to this event is probably the only, as Mary Ellen Mancini said, probably the only drive-through event that Sarasota is holding at this time. So so we're one of a kind. There is a wish list for Sparks clients on the Spark website to help you in picking out toys and gifts if you have any questions about that. Maggie. Mm -hmm. If you have a car, if you know someone with a car, you can participate in this. And the event is called Florida Winter Wonderland with lights and music and festive decorations. So you need not go up north to see snow this year. You can stay right in Sarasota in the warmth or the coolness of your, of your car when you can drive through as you will be guided through the winter wonderland and you can deliver your unwrapped toys and gifts and donations as you're greeted by jovial volunteers and a couple of elves as well. 
Um, there's also um, a donation box. And um, for anyone who wants to make a cash or check donation. And of course, we take credit cards. So that will be set up as well. Um, we ask that uh, attendees remain in their car and all volunteers will wear masks, gloves as necessary, and will social distance for everyone's safety. We have a group of dedicated volunteers who, who are, and we've talked about this in our committee meetings and people are really gung-ho on doing this, who are very happy to pick up gifts in the Sarasota, Bradenton, and Venice and Comas areas from November 30th through December 7th for those who are unable to attend the drive-through event. I will be the contact for further details on gift pickups. And my contact information, as Sandy Kira said, is in the directory, as well as it will be included on the invitation. Unwrapped toys, gifts, or gift cards can also be left at the Spark office prior to the event or after the event through December 7th. Monetary donations can also be made on the Spark website which has been covered also, and gifts may be ordered on Amazon Smile. So you can have those gifts delivered from Amazon directly to the Spark office. And Amazon will actually give a small donation directly to Spark. Just be sure to designate Spark as the organization that you wish to support. We look forward to seeing many of you at the event. It's, it's going to be really fun. And, or, or, and also when we pick up your donated gifts, we'll be able to, to say hi then as well. We encourage you to make a donation, which would equate to your luncheon ticket price or whatever you can afford to give during this time. Please support the transitional holiday event and bring a smile to the faces of our Spark families during a very important time of the year. Please help us make a difference. Thank you and hope to see you there. And now Maggie's have, waving a cookie. Have a cookie, from Andrew. Cookie, cakes, and carolers. <laughs> and now, now you will hear from Jessica Hayes, CEO and President of Spark, um, Jessica has been in that position for those of you who are new since 2015, and she has done a tremendous job leading the organization, especially during this pandemic. She is a devoted and respected leader in the community, and without further ado, I will turn it over to Jessica. Yay. Good morning. Don't forget about Spark. Not me, you can forget about me. I have loved seeing all of you virtually this morning. The cookies were an extra special touch and I love that we have our ducks in a row. I apologize, Sherry Mills made me one of these great backgrounds, but when I tried to use that virtual feature, it looked like my eyes were blacked out and it was a little creepy. So I decided that you can be here with me in my office today. Um, I appreciate all of you who are joining us virtually this morning for the Auxiliary's opening coffee. Normally we're together at one of our beautiful clubs here in Sarasota, usually looking out over the water. And wherever you are today, I hope that you feel the love that we have for all of you as supporters of Spark and the appreciation that we have that you have not forgotten about us in a time of isolation and just a strange time in the world. Um, this has been challenging, but Spark is no stranger to crisis and no stranger to a challenge. And we um, you know, we're used to pivoting, we're used to adapting. Those words are things that we continuously do on a daily basis here because no two days alike are alike at Spark. So in some ways, as I think about comments this morning to talk to you about what has changed at Spark and what's going on, in some ways it's not that different than it was um, six to eight months ago. There has definitely been increased isolation and a lot of concern for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. Those who have experienced trauma and experience it on a continued basis um, have been further isolated from help, have um, had their abusers isolate them and use these tactics of power and control. And those things have been exacerbated by a lack of resources and a lack of connection to their usual support systems or those outside of the home that might have offered support and assistance in the past. So we have done everything we can and we continue to look for new ways to innovate and transition to meet the needs of the people that need us the most. So I can't really see the chat. So if you have questions, I apologize if I don't answer your question. So I'm going to try to go through um, what things look like at Spark, what we've done in the past few months, um, 
and let you know what's going on here at Spark. We are so excited to have the support of the auxiliary because it is very much an uncertain time. We have not closed at any point over the last few months. Um, our shelter remained open and our outreach of office while we had fewer people here and we were working to make sure that everyone was safe and distanced. We had staff here throughout the stay at home order and beyond and in many ways our Outreach offices and our support systems at shelter don't look all that different, although we are taking measures to use. We have a fogger that we purchased um, through a generous donation from our friends at Bird Key Yacht Club, and we're able to clean and disinfect in um, new ways and try to keep everybody as safe and healthy as possible. Our hotline has remained very busy over the last several months. Our shelter initially had um, a lower number of people there. I think everyone was more concerned with being out and communal living, and that has picked back up. And we certainly have a lot of families and individuals and pets there who need us. And we're very fortunate and very thankful because one of the trends that our staff have seen is that violence seems to have increased. So while these there are um, people are still experiencing violence and abuse in their homes, but the physical abuse, abuse that we're hearing about sounds uh, more severe. We're seeing more cases nationwide reported in the media. They've had a lot of homicides up in North Florida in recent months. Um, the news is very concerning which I know, I try to stay away from it, but I know that you um, probably share that, but definitely when it comes to domestic violence cases, we're hearing of more violence, uh, more homicide. So we are doing everything that we can to reach people and let them know that we're here, we're open, our hotline's available. Our attorneys have seen more people in the last few months than they normally see at this time of year. So they are busier than ever and they're able to meet with survivors either through FaceTime or video conferencing software um, in a secure way, or they can meet with someone in person. And depending on the judge, they're able to um, attend court either virtually or in person as well. So we've, we've not missed a beat there. Our hospital advocacy and accompaniment and response has changed a bit at the request of the hospitals in Sarasota County and in DeSoto County. So we're doing that by phone and or by video conference um, to meet with a survivor in the hospital who requests an advocate and some support in that way. So that has changed a bit and we are hoping to be able to go in person again soon because it is very important that we're there for those survivors in, in whatever way we can be the most supportive. Um, our prevention team has been, really been incredible. You know, we're used to being in schools this time of year and that has been a new challenge because um, the schools are pivoting and transitioning and their, um, our team is very tech savvy and we're very fortunate to have their ideas and they have been connecting with educators and students and professionals in the community to provide continuing education and prevention education. And that's just really important. It's a big part of our mission and we don't want to lose that with our loss of personal connection. So we're working hard, continuing to, to look for new ways each day. Um, and the treasure chest, I know we're going to have our virtual coffee in November at the treasure chest, but I will tell you that has been, we were closed for about six weeks when we had stay at home orders um, back in April into May, and we reopened to incredible community support donations pouring in. Um, people really wanted to shop and our volunteers really wanted to come back. So we have made efforts to accommodate all of those things as safely as we can. And our treasure chest has been up in sales 20% over where we were last summer. So whether that's um, because people are looking for deals or it has anything to do with the staff there has changed pricing and they've rearranged the store and it looks amazing. We've repainted. We're doing a lot of work at the treasure chest to make that um, a continued supportive stream of revenue for Spark because right now everything is uncertain. So 
that's just to share with you the highlights of how we've transitioned. Um, we're doing support groups via Zoom. If you know someone who needs support and is not comfortable in person, please encourage them to reach out on our hotline. We can provide teletherapy, telehealth, and our therapists are here and can meet people's needs um, in some ways in, in a more accommodating way than ever before. So um, our biggest concern looking into the future is the uncertainty that we're all facing. You know, no one knows um, I think on a personal level, we don't know where we're going to be in a few months and what we're going to be able to do. And that certainly reaches far with Spark as well. We don't know what fundraising we're going to be able to do. We don't know what people's support is going to look like. And we do know with certainty that survivors need us and that it's more important than ever that we're there for them, that we make those connections, we provide that support and that safety and that hope and healing into the days to come, regardless of what's happening in the world around us. So thank you for your support. Thank you to the auxiliary, to our board of directors. We have members of the board that are on this morning. Um, thank you for your leadership and to the Spark Auxiliary Board. Thank you so much. Couldn't do this without you and Sandy Keir for your leadership. It's certainly a time to be a leader in the world. So thank you for all that you do. And I'll turn it back over to Sandy now. Hello, am I back on? I don't know. <laughs> thank you, Jessica, so much. That was a wonderful presentation and thank you so much for everything you do for Spark. Um, you've done a great job leading the organization for the last few years and particularly through this very challenging time. And I just wanna let you know, we all feel very lucky that you're in charge. Um, I'm just looking at questions from the chat room, and the only thing I do see is a question about how to uh, uh, put in a reservation for the orientation session, and I'm just going to suggest that you reach out to Gina Jordan, who is listed in the membership directory, and uh, she will be able to take your reservation and put you on the list for that event. So I just want to finish up by thanking you all for joining us today, and I want to thank our production manager, Ning, because Without her <laughs> running the controls, we wouldn't have been able to do anything like this. So bear with us as we become Zoom uh, experts, and we look forward to seeing you on our next call on October 7th. Have a nice week. Bye-bye.